Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is Matt from Under The Cuff. Um, today's video is just a simple tutorial really and a bit of a learning experience for me as well as a first time user. So this is my Tudor Black Bay 41 Harrods edition, a wonderful piece. Um, but unfortunately I'm going to be selling this uh, to let it go. Mainly so I can fund my uh, uh, Rolex root beer that I've recently bought. So. In order to make this more saleable, uh, I've decided to try and clean up some of the polishes and scuffs that it's acquired over the years from its from its use. I'll try and zoom in a bit here and see if you can see some of the fine hairs, hairline scratches, etc., all over the polished side. So this this case has mirror polished sides to it. Uh, and as beautiful as that is, unfortunately, it does mean that it is quite susceptible to hairline scratches. So we're going to give a product a go today. This is not sponsored by the manufacturer, um, but I just thought uh, if it works, I'll let you all know about it. So this has been recommended many times to me, Cape Cod cleaning cloths. Um, I've got a large tin here and uh, I haven't opened this yet. Arrived today from Amazon. I thought I'd do a quick little video about it and uh, and see how it goes, see if it improves things. So I'll probably end up speeding up the footage uh, when it comes to the actual edit so that you don't have to sit through, uh, you know, 10 minutes of me just polishing a piece of metal. But I'll show you what we've got in the box. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, individual packets here, each one containing a large polishing cloth, uh, four by six inches on each one. I think you can actually cut these down, put them away and reuse them, hence the nice tin. We've got a nice uh, lint-free um, drying or polish or wipe rubbing down cloth for afterwards, and some plastic gloves as well, only one pack of those. So put this out the way here. Try and get the name in for you. I've got a few packets of uh, rubber gloves here. I only need one or two of those, so let's put those back. So this is the package. Directions for use on outer tin over here. So it's we actually get two per packet. So I'll put this one back. I won't be needing that one. Ooh. God, wow, that's really sticky. Okay, I think it's time to go and wash my hands, put the gloves on before going any further with this. Stand by. So I'm back, gloved up, as you can see. Note to future self, put the gloves on before opening the packet because it's quite sticky. So I'm just gonna cut off, I've got some scissors with me this time. Let's see how we get on. Maybe we'll do one side of this and compare it to the other. That might be the best way to do this. Okay, we'll do that instead. Right. Okay, so here goes. So that's after, what, 30 seconds of rubbing? And you can see the dirt that's come off that side. Don't know if it'll be making any difference just yet, but... There's obviously going to be some deeper scratches that this level of polishing won't be able to clear up. But nevertheless, it should hopefully improve it to the point that it adds a few quid onto the sale price of this watch. This large tin was £25, I think, off Amazon. And to be honest, if you're only cleaning one watch, or maybe two watches at a time, you probably don't need the the large tin. You can probably get away with the individual pouches because you get so much material in each cloth. I'm using a medium amount of pressure, not particularly light, but I'm not pushing down hard in, at all. Now I don't want to use this on any of the brushed surfaces because this will unbrush the brushing. 
course you can just use a scotch bright pad or something like that to bring the polish sorry to bring the brushed areas back to life again but the brushed areas on this are in reasonably good condition anyway so it's not a huge concern of mine I might give it a go buffed up just like me obviously okay there is a noticeable difference already between the right side and the left side the finest scratches are definitely being taken out of there so we'll keep going and see if we can't make it even better. I'm trying to adjust the point at which my thumb puts pressure down onto the side of the case, moving it around and trying to vary it, spread it out so that we don't get polishing in just one area, moving up to the edges. Now I wonder if you had like a little mini Dremel or something like that and you could wrap a little piece of this around it. I bet someone's done it. Somewhere in the life hacks on the internet. I imagine this would work even better on gold being a softer material than steel. I wouldn't want to use it on anything other than solid gold though, at least not very often because polishing actually removes some of the material from the surface. So if you've only got a gold plated watch, which is normally only several atoms thick, you start polishing too much, you're going to get down to the metal underneath. So this is not recommended for gold plated items. I think it even says that on the tin in the instructions and if you do be very gentle and work on a small test area first of course when you are working on your watch best to lay something soft down underneath and clean so that as you're resting the watch down on the surface there's no bits of dust or grit or lint scratching the side that you've just polished. Notice I'm, only, I'm trying to only go back and forth in one direction, one plane of movement as is recommended rather than circles or up and down. Are we getting any better? Yeah, I must have some quite significant scratches in there. Up on the top end, maybe that's just grease, not sure. So Tudor make their cases from 316L steel, which is highly corrosion resistant and does make for an excellent long lasting polish, assuming you don't scratch the heck out of it. Interesting note, Rolex actually owns their own foundries. So they have proprietary alloy compositions that only they are allowed to use. So they can experiment with um, metallurgy, come up with new blends and brands and cocktails of metals. It's a good start nonetheless. We 
with uh, a lot of patience and time, I reckon we can get a good job on this. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a, a clamp or a vise to hold this case down? Save my left hand a lot of strain. God, you'd need a patience of a saint to do this for a full-time job, wouldn't you? I need to run this through a cleaning bath afterwards to get all the chemicals from the cleaning cloths out from behind all the seals and under the bezel, etc. And then I think we'll see a real... Now, that looks much better. Let's have a look at that. Actually starts to fit. Look, look at that. That's way better. Look at the other side. I wonder if you can see them both at the same time there. Have a quick look over this side. You see the scratches? There we go. You can see them twinkling in the light there. All those hairline scratches on that side of the case. And Well, there are still some. Definitely not as bad as it was before. There you go, you can see them a bit better there. Much better than it was there. Anyway, I guess that's a quick demonstration. Um, I will carry on going and uh, clean it up. So. Killer watch, if you're interested, by the way. Hit me up on underthecuff.com or message me on at underthecuffofficial on Instagram or sales or inquiries at underthecuff.com. See you soon. Bye bye.